Hello friends, uh, welcome to uh, this lecture. Uh, in previous lecture, we have discussed uh, some basic concept of uh, ordinary uh, differential equation and uh, we will continue uh, our discussion in uh, this lecture also. And in this lecture, we basically want to discuss the existence and uniqueness theorem for uh, ordinary differential equation. So, uh, uh, let us discuss um, the following. So, uh, uh, it means what is the problem that uh, consider the differential equation dy by dt equal to f t y uh, with the initial condition y t naught equal to y naught and here f is a given function of t and y. Our aim is to find a solution of the given differential equation that is to construct uh, it means what? It means a, uh, we need to find out a suitable function y which satisfy the differential equation dy by dt equal to f dy in a neighborhood of t naught and the graph of f contain the point t naught and y naught. So, uh, we need uh, we have discussed certain problem uh, of uh, this dy by dt equal to f dy and y t naught equal to y naught. Let us uh, discuss some more problem and with the help of these uh, examples we try to uh, discuss more uh, theories. So, if you look at this uh, example 1, here we have uh, the uh, linear differential equation. So, consider the following differential equation y dash plus y by t equal to 2 and uh, here t is greater than 0 and the initial condition along with the, this differential equation is y 1 equal to 2 and uh, we can easily check that a solution of 2 is given by y t equal to t plus 1 by in fact, uh, if you look at this is a uh, linear differential equation y dash plus uh, y by t equal to 2 and you can find out the uh, integrative factor here and uh, if you uh, use integrative factor, I think it is integrative factor is e, in e to the power minus uh, p t e d t. So, if you can calculate this then it is coming out to be and p t is what the coefficient of y that is 1 by t. So, it is going to be what it is e to power minus integration of 1 by t d t. So, it is e to power minus ln t. So, it is uh, giving as 1 sorry it is not uh, minus it is plus here integrative factor is this. So, it is coming out to be t here. So, integrative factor is t here. So, you just multiply by uh, t here. So, it is coming out to be y dash t plus y equal to 2 t and if you simplify this the first term is what d by d t of t y equal to 2 t and if you simplify this is what you can simply say that it is t y equal to t square plus c. So, you can say that y is coming out to be uh, um, t plus c by t. Now, this c is a constant which you can uh, find out using the initial condition y 1 equal to 2 and you can say that uh, when you put y 1 equal to 2 your c is coming out to be 1. So, your uh, in, uh, solution of this problem 2 uh, along with the initial condition 3 is given as y t equal to t plus 1 by 2 and uh, we have already seen that the general solution of this uh, initial value problem is given by t plus c by t and we can observe that what we want to observe here is that uh, the solution y t equal to t plus 1 by t is having problem when uh, we take t is tending to 0. What do you mean by problem that uh, here the solution is tending to infinity as t tending to 0 and that we can say that since the equation has a singularity at t equal to 0 here if you look at the coefficient of y is 1 by t and is t tending to 0 then y by 1 by t is tending to uh, infinity. So, it means that this differential equation itself has a uh, say singularity at t equal to 0. So, we we may uh, consider that of course, solution may also have the similar kind of nature. It means that uh, solution will also tend to uh, infinity as t tending to 0. So, that is the uh, observation we can uh, observe from this, but if you look at the same differential equation, but uh, with a new initial condition that is y 1 equal to 1. In a previous uh, we have condition y 1 equal to 2, but now we are considering the same differential equation with y 1 equal to 1. So, if you look at the general solution is given as y t equal to t plus c by t. Now, if you put the condition that y 1 equal to 1 in place of 2, then we can say that c is coming out to be 0. So, it means that here the solution is given by y t equal to t, but this uh, uh, 
create a little bit problem. Why? Because if you look at the differential equation, this differential equation has a problem at t e is equal to 0, means as t tending to 0, uh, the coefficient function of y is uh, uh, going to be unbounded uh, at um, as t tending to 0. But if you look at the solution here, that solution y t equal to t is very nice and we can say that the solution behave very nicely at the point t equal to 0. So, at this point we case we, we may say that that in case of linear differential equation that is dy by dt plus a t y t equal to b t along with the initial condition y t not equal to y not, uh, the solution may not be necessarily discontinuous at the point where the coefficients are discontinuous. So, it means that uh, um, if a t uh, is discontinuous uh, at a particular point say t equal to t naught, then solution may not be discontinuous at that particular point. But if a solution is not continuous at some point, it is only those point where coefficients are not continuous. So, it means that it may not necessary that solution may be uh, may have discontinuity at, at the point where this uh, a t is discontinuous. But if at all uh, solution has a discontinuity, it has to be um, along the point where a t is discontinuous. That is the observation we have observed from the uh, uh, previous uh, this kind of example. Now, uh, we we want to uh, consider one more example, but this time in, uh, in place of um, uh, uh, linear differential equation, now we want to consider the non-linear initial value problem. And we can say that if we consider a non-linear initial value problem, then situation may be quite different. In general, there is no relation between the reason where the function f t y is continuous and the reason where the solution exists, right. So, initially uh, in, in, in case of linear differential equation, we have seen that solution may not be discontinuous at all, but if it has a discontinuity, it has to be only at those points where the coefficient functions uh, is uh, having discontinuity. But in case of nonlinear initial value problem, this is uh, uh, quite different. Here, uh, we, 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 we may see that, that there is no relation between the reason where the function f t y is continuous and the reason where the solution exists. For example, consider the following nonlinear differential equation y dash equal to y square with the condition y 0 equal to y naught. Here, y naught we are considering as a positive uh, real number. Now, the general solution of 5 this equation number 5 is given by y t equal to minus 1 upon t plus c. You, this you can easily calculate, it is a separable equation and you can uh, uh, solve this separable equation along with this initial condition. So, you can find out the value of c using the initial condition y 0 equal to y naught and if you uh, apply that initial condition, we can say that the solution is given by y t equal to y naught divided by 1 minus y naught t. And here we can see that the function uh, this uh, y dash equal to y square, the nonlinear function y square is continuous for all t belonging to r. So, here this is a uh, uh, continuous function for all t, but the solution is going to be unbounded at t equal to 1 by y naught. If you look at here since y naught is positive, so uh, 1 minus y naught t is going to be 0 at t uh, is equal to 1 upon y, 1 upon y naught. So, it means that the solution is going to be unbounded when t is equal to 1 by y naught. So, it means that the solution is valid only in the interval minus infinity to 1 by y naught. So, what uh, and also uh, so, uh, here we have seen that the solution may not have any relation that um, where f t y is continuous and solution may not be continuous in that kind of interval. And also we have seen uh, that there are some initial value problem which we which have one solution more than one solution and no solution at all. This we have seen uh, in uh, previous lecture. So, uh, uh, if you consider uh, all the uh, all these these two examples along with the initial value problem which we have discussed in uh, previous lectures we may ask the following questions first that how do we know that the initial value problem has one or more than one solution first of all we we are not sure whether a given initial value problem may have may have a solution or not but if um, if we have a solution of one then whether it is unique or not it means uh, our second uh, question may be like this that if we have a solution of 1, 
then uh, we need to worry about the uniqueness of the solution. It means that it may happen that the same initial value problem may have 2, 3 or infinitely many solution of 1. So, this is our second uh, doubt. Third doubt is why uh, we are worrying about uh, the existence of solution. Uh, after all, what is the use of determining whether one has a unique solution if we are not able to find it explicitly. It means that it may happen that a given initial value problem has a solution. Uh, it means that we are able to find out the solution number of the first two problem that it has a solution. It may have one solution or may than more than one solution, but we are not able to find out the solution in an explicit manner. It may happen that um, um, the existence is proved, but we are not able to find out the solution in explicit manner. But uh, uh, this uh, question 3 may not have uh, much uh, problem, because uh, nowadays we have several uh, software very uh, important uh, very useful softwares are available, which can find out the uh, solution not in uh, an article manner, but they, uh, they can find out the solution in a numerical manner. It means that you can always find out a solution which is accurate up to 3, 4 decimal place or whatever desired accuracy we want. We have uh, very good software. So, I think um, uh, um, uh, this third question may be uh, solved if we have a software and we can find out the solution uh, which is uh, accurate up to uh, uh, decimals. Uh, few places, maybe four places, eight places, or sixteen places. So here, uh, in this uh, lecture and coming lecture, we want to discuss the condition by which we can solve these three questions. So once we know that, uh, we want to understand the importance of the first two uh, problem. That once we know that the the differential equation one has a unique solution y t, then we uh, have a license to find out a anarchical or numerical solution of the one. So, it means that first thing we want to consider that a given differential equation has a solution or not. If it has a solution, we need to worry whether it has a unique solution or not. If it is if that uh, differential uh, if the initial value problem has a unique solution, then we try to find out the method um, to find out that particular solution. And it is very uh, uh, advantageous situation when we have a uh, unique solution. So, uh, how to find out that unique solution? What we try to do here, we try to approximate the solution of the initial value problem uh, using uh, different iteration schemes. So, here we want to find out one iteration scheme which is known as Picard iteration scheme. And what we are going to uh, do is the following that we have the following algorithm for proving the existence of a solution y t of 1. Construct a sequence of function y and t which come closer and closer uh, to solution of 1. It means that somehow we want to find out a sequence of function which is going to be converged to the solution of the problem 1. So, first we need to construct a sequence and then we want to find out that this constructed sequence has a limit y t in some kind of interval uh, say t naught to t naught plus alpha that uh, alpha we need to find out in this uh, particular procedure. And third very important thing that we need to show that this um, limit which we have uh, considered as a limit of the sequence. This limit is a solution of 1 in the said interval that is the uh, say outline of the uh, the following theorem which we are going to discuss. So, first thing is construct a sequence, second is that we need to show that this sequence has a limit in some interval and uh, third is that limit is actually a solution in that particular interval that we are going to uh, uh, see in this lecture. So, uh, to consider the existing theorem for first we let us assume that suppose f is continuous in a domain T and that t naught y naught is an arbitrary point of t. So, first step towards the existence result is to show that the initial value problem dy by dt equal to f t y with the condition y t naught equal to y naught is equivalent to the following integral equation y t equal to y naught plus t naught to t f s y s d s where t is belonging to some interval. Uh, 
And uh, to show the equivalence between this differential equation and the integral equation, we consider the following lemma. We say that a function y t is a solution of initial value problem dy by dt equal to f t y with y t not equal to y not on an interval i if and only if y t is a solution of the integral equation 6 on the interval i. So, first uh, we need to show the equivalence and then we uh, proceed uh, um, with the existence theorem while showing the um, solution of this integral equation. So, let us uh, prove the um, existence uh, uh, so equivalence of these two uh, differential equation and integral equation. So, if y is a solution of dy by dt equal to f t y on i satisfying y t not equal to y not we have y dash equal to f t y t here y dash denote the d, uh, symbol dy by dt and we integrate from t naught to t on this and we have what y t minus y t naught equal to t naught to t f s y s d s when t belonging to i. Now, here we already have this condition that y t naught equal to y naught. So, it means that this I can write as y t equal to. So, this we can write as y t equal to y naught plus uh, this integral t naught to t f of s comma y s d s and which is nothing but equation number 6. So, it means that we have shown that if y is a solution of this differential equation initial value problem then y is a solution of this integral equation. Now, we want to show the um, converse part conversely if y t is a continuous solution of 6 then by the continuity of the function f t y t the right hand side means this side is differentiable. Uh, uh, so, differentiable then by the fundamental theorem of calculus we can verify that y t satisfy the differential equation. So, we simply differentiate this and when we differentiate this this will give you y dash t this is a constant. So, this will uh, be 0. So, y dash t equal to and this we uh, do, uh, derivative of this using Leibniz theorem we can consider that it is nothing but y dash e, uh, t equal to f t y t and if you look at this integral equation and if you put t equal to t naught then we will get y t naught equal to y naught because this term is going to be 0. So, it means that from the uh, integral equation we can say that y t naught equal to y naught and y dash equal to f t y t. So, it means that we have uh, seen the equivalence of uh, the initial value problem and this integral equation. So, once we have uh, equivalence we want to find out uh, we, we want to discuss the existence theorem. So, with the help of this lemma we will establish the existence of a solution of 1 by proving the existence of a solution of 6. So, um, so it means that our working procedure is to find out the uh, solution of the integral equation rather than solution of the differential equation. Now, these two are uh, equivalent. So, we can show that once we have the existence uh, solution of uh, integral equation then we have a solution of um, uh, differential equation. So, now our problem is to reduce is reduced to find a solution of the associated integral equation that is our problem now and that is uh, now we want to find out a function such that it satisfies 6. Now, here uh, it may happen that uh, we can integrate uh, right hand side that is f t y t is some function of t which we can integrate or um, uh, you can simply say that uh, if this part if you look at this if this is integrable f s we can find out this integral in a precise manner then we can find out this solution y t in a precise manner in explicit manner. But problem occurs when we do not uh, have a function like this which can be integrable. So, it means that uh, therefore, next we try to approximate the solution of integral equation because we are not able to find out the solution in a, an explicit form. So, let us uh, start with the initial condition y not as our first case. So, once we uh, want to find out the approximate solution the first guess is the condition this y t naught equal to y naught because we already know that at point t equal to t naught it uh, satisfy the initial value problem. So, our first approximate is the um, uh, this uh, y t is y naught. So, here if you look at what is our problem here um, um, if you consider this we have this problem y s equal to f t y t and here y t naught equal to y naught. So, we have seen that it is equal equivalent to the following 
uh, integral equation that is this t naught to t f of s y of s d of s. So, that we have already seen now uh, it all depend on this uh, integral if this is uh, if we are able to find out this integral in explicit manner we have a solution, but if it is not uh, uh, we are not able to find out this integral then we uh, are in trouble that we are not having a solution. So, what we try to show that if uh, we uh, try to approximate the solution uh, in the following manner we suppose we say that uh, here we say that if we replace t naught to t f of s now in place of y s if we say that let us say that this y naught s is an approximation of the solution y s. So, we want to find out the approximation of y t. So, first guess is let us say that in place of y if we put y naught s. So, just calculate this and we call this as y 1 t and it is uh, we call this as a first approximation. So, calculate this quantity y naught plus t naught to t f s y naught s d s. Now, if we calculate this quantity and if we say that y 1 t is coming out to be y naught this implies that that y naught is equal to y naught plus t naught to t f of s y naught s d s. Here this y naught s is nothing but y naught. So, it means that what we have shown here that uh, this y naught satisfy if y 1 t is y naught it means that y naught satisfy this uh, integral equation. This implies that your y t is nothing but y naught and y naught is a solution if it happened, but if, if, if it not happened it means if y 1 t if y 1 t is not y naught then we have to move further. So, that we are going to discuss here. So, here we say that the first approximation is given as this y 1 t equal to y naught plus t naught to t f s y naught d s where t belongs to i and if y 1 t is y naught then uh, we have shown that y t is equal to y naught is indeed a solution. If not then we try y 1 t as our next guess. So, uh, by taking this y 1 t we define y 2 t as y naught plus t naught to t f of s y 1 s t of s and then we try to see that if y 2 t is coming out to be y 1 uh, t we stop and we say that y 1 t is our solution. If we uh, if we, we say that y 2 t is not uh, y naught then we move to next guess and in this way we can define a sequence of approximation solution y 1 t y 2 t y n t as follows. Here y t naught is equal to y naught and y j plus 1 t equal to y naught plus t naught to t f s uh, y j s d s where j is uh, from 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. And these function y and t are called successive approximation or Picard iteration and we uh, once we so the first uh, uh, process is done means we are able to find out the uh, we are able to construct the sequence uh, which we um, uh, trying to prove that this sequence will converge to the solution of the integral equation. So, as pointed out in a previous example that the solution of nonlinear differential equation may not exist for all time t. Therefore, we cannot expect the Picard iteration y and t of 1 to converge for all t because we have already seen this example if you remember this example that y dash t equal to y square. Right, and we have seen that the solution exists only for this interval minus infinity to minus 1 upon, uh, one upon y naught. Here y naught uh, is positive and y t uh, naught is defined as y naught. In fact, here t naught is equal to 0. So, we have seen that in this particular example, we have seen the solution may not exist for all time t. So, it means that whatever we are going to um, prove, we uh, uh, will prove that it will not converge for all time t. So, it means that we to provide us with a clue of where the Picard iterates converge we try to find out an interval in which all the y and y and t's are uniformly bounded. It means that we need to find out the interval such that your y and t is bounded by some say constant k where k is some fixed constant k. So, now we need to find the interval in which y and t of the uh, previous equation convergent. In other words, we want to find out a rectangle 
in which the graph of y n will be contained. So, uh, we need to find out the interval in which y n t convergent. In other words, we want to find out a rectangle in which the graph of y n will be contained. So, uh, uh, that we are going to do and that is very much related to the uh, nonlinear function f. So, let us first assume that f and del f by del y are continuous function on a closed rectangle where rectangle r is defined like this. It is set of all t and y where t is uh, lying in this interval t naught to t naught plus a and y minus y naught is less than or equal to b where a and b are some real constant and this is a rectangle is centered at t naught and y naught. And it means that the function f which we have assumed as a continuous function and del f by del y which we also assume that it is continuous function is uh, uh, though uh, this function f and del f by del y are bounded above by constants m greater than 0. So, we have assumed that there exists a constant m such that modulus of f t y is less than or equal to m where t y belongs to this r and del f by del y is also bounded by another constant k uh, for uh, t and y belonging to this uh, rectangle r. So, we say that if del f by del y is continuous in r then there exists a positive constant k such that modulus of f t y 2 minus f t y, uh, y 1 is less than or equal to k y 2 minus y 1 where t y 1 and t y 2 belongs to r for all point uh, points t 1 y 1 and t 2 y 2 t y 1 and t y 2 belongs to r in r. So, uh, that we sh uh, show that uh, del f by del y is continuous in r is equivalent to the condition this and this condition has a uh, name very important name that we are going to discuss in uh, next uh, slide. So, first uh, let us prove this uh, lemma. So, here we say that if t y 1 and t y 2 are 2 points in R and assume that this y 1 is uh, less than y 2, then by Rolle's mean value theorem uh, we can say that there exists a number eta between y 1 and y 2 such that f t y 2 minus f t y 1 is equal to del f by del y t comma eta y 2 minus y 1. And we can say that since uh, the point t and comma eta is also in R, then uh, we can say that del f by del y uh, uh, at this point t and eta is bounded by this k that we have already assumed here in uh, this thing. Here we assume that uh, modulus of del f by del y is less than or equal to k. So, it is uh, true for all t y in this rectangle R. So, in particular it is also true for this t and eta. So, del f by del y um, at the uh, point t eta is also bounded by k. So, here from this we can say that modulus of f t y 2 minus f t y uh, uh, y 1 is less than or equal to k y 2 minus y 1 and it is valid whenever t y 1 and t y 2 are in R are in this rectangle and this condition this condition has a uh, name and we define uh, 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 we try to give this inequality as a following thing. A function f that satisfy an, e an equality of the form 12 for all t y 1 comma t y 2 in the region R is said to satisfy a Lipschitz condition in R and k is called the Lipschitz constant. So, it means that if satisfy uh, if f satisfy the uh, condition given in 12 then we say that f is uh, ellipse, f, f satisfy the Lipschitz condition and the condition uh, the constant uh, uh, appearing here is called the Lipschitz constant. So, the above argument shows that if f and del f by uh, del y are continu uh, continuous on r then f satisfy a Lipschitz condition in r, but converse may not be true. In fact, there are some function f which satisfy the Lipschitz condition in a reason but do not have a continuous partial derivative with respect to y there. For example, if you consider this function f t y equal to t modulus of y and uh, you define in a region containing the uh, uh, point 0 0. So, in our existence result we need to assume that f satisfy a Lipschitz condition in y and not the strong assumption about the continuity of del f by del y. So, we are discussing this Lipschitz condition because in uh, existence and uniqueness theorem we assume we are going to assume that f satisfy a Lipschitz condition. 
that is why we are discussing uh, the Lipschitz condition. So, here we can simply say that since f is not uh, the partial derivative of f does not exist, we simply say that double f by double y is not continuous in a region where uh, 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 0 0 is contained, but we can easily see that uh, this satisfy the Lipschitz uh, condition. You can see like this, here we can simply say that f t y is equal to t modulus of y. So, here we can say that f t y 1 minus f t y 2 it is t modulus of y 1 minus t modulus of y 2 is equal to modulus of t y 1. Y, uh, y 2 minus y 1 and we already know that it is what it is and here we can say modulus of y 2 minus y 1. Now, this t belongs to some interval. So, we can say that if a t belongs to t naught to t naught plus h we can say that t is bounded by h. So, we can write h y 2 minus y 1. So, we can say that f satisfy the uh, uh, Lipschitz condition like this. So, since t belongs to t naught to t naught plus h, we can say that um, uh, this t is bounded by t naught plus h. So, here you can say that f is satisfying the Lipschitz condition like this, but we have already seen that uh, since uh, it has no partial derivative, we say that though f is uh, satisfying the Lipschitz condition but here partial derivative is not continuous and uh, we can say that this uh, existence that partial uh, continuity of partial derivative is a stronger condition than the Lipschitz condition. Now, we consider one more example where we say that if f t y is equal to y to power 1 by 3 in a rectangle R which is defined like this uh, uh, is a set of all t y such that modulus of t is less than or equal to 1, modulus of y is less than or equal to 2. Then we can say that f uh, does not satisfy Lipschitz condition in R. To establish this, we need no, uh, only to produce a suitable pair of points for which this equation number uh, in equality uh, to 12 fails. So, here we uh, um, the purpose of this example is that it may happen a given function uh, may not satisfy the Lipschitz condition in some region, some rectangle, but it may satisfy the Lipschitz condition in some other uh, rectangle. So, uh, to show that first of all that it satisfy it, it does not satisfy the Lipschitz condition in this rectangle, uh, we need to show that uh, the uh, this condition is not true the condition this f t y 1 minus f t y 2 less than or equal to k times y 1 minus y 2. So, this will not hold for any constant k. So, uh, to show that let us consider uh, two points say t y 1 and t comma 0, where uh, t is lying between minus 1 to 1 and y 1 is some uh, uh, some constant which is bigger than 0. And if you look at uh, look at this quantity f t y 1 minus f t y naught divided by y 1 minus 0, here y, uh, here y naught is simply 0. So, f t y 1 is uh, nothing but y 1 to power 1 by 3 and f t y naught is uh, simply 0 and divided by y 1. So, we, we can have uh, this as y 1 to power minus 2 by 3. So, this const uh, this um, uh, to show that uh, uh, such a k does not exist means we have to show that the f t y 1 minus f t y 2 divided by y 1 minus y 2 we can say that this uh, condition is equivalent to this condition. So, if we can show uh, that this is an unbounded uh, uh, thing then such a k does not exist. So, that is uh, what we are going to see it here. So, we can say that choosing y 1 greater than 0 sufficiently small. So, here this uh, we, we can choose this y 1 sufficiently small and we can show that this um, y to power minus 2 by 3 can be made larger than any preassigned constant. So, it means that this quantity y 1 to power minus 2 by 3 can be made unbounded. So, it means that there exists no k such that modulus of y 1 to power minus 2 by 3 is bounded by any constant k. So, it means that 
you uh, if you produce any constant we can take y1 small enough such that it is going to be bigger than that constant. So, it means that uh, what we have seen here that uh, this f t y which is given as y to power 1 by 3 is um, not satisfying the Lipschitz condition in the rectangle this. But we can uh, also uh, see that uh, first of all what we have seen is this that there exists some function f t y t and a reason r where f does not satisfy the Lipschitz condition. The nonlinear function f t y equal to uh, y to power 1 by 3 may satisfy the Lipschitz condition in some other rectangle. For example, if we define a rectangle like this r 1 equal to uh, set of all t y such that modulus t is less than r equal to 1 and modulus of y minus 2 is less than 1. Look at here, here the quantity y to uh, y 1 to power minus 2 by 3 is going to be bounded by some constant k. So, here we have seen that in one rectangle it does not satisfy the Lipschitz condition, but in some other rectangle it may satisfy the Lipschitz condition. So, it means uh, uh, that we are going to uh, use in uh, uh, coming uh, existence uh, uh, and uniqueness theorem. So, here we have seen that that um, this function f t y equal to y to power 1 by 3 uh, is not satisfying the uh, Lipschitz condition in uh, uh, rectangle r which we have defined as this. Uh, here we have seen that this nonlinear function f t y equal to y to power 1 by 3 does not satisfy the uh, uh, Lipschitz condition in this uh, rectangle r, but we have seen that uh, this uh, function may satisfy the Lipschitz condition in some other rectangle for example, in this rectangle and here we can say that here this quantity y 1 to power minus 2 by 3 is actually bounded by some constant k. We can always find out the constant k such that uh, f uh, dever f by dever y is bounded by a constant k and uh, the existence uh, that modulus of dever f by dever y is bounded implies that f satisfy the Lipschitz condition. So, uh, here we uh, stop our uh, lecture and um, uh, next lecture we will continue our discussion uh, after this. So, thank you for listening us, thank you.